Hi, and thanks to everyone at Iguana Cell for uh, coming to have a chat with me today about my fountain pen history. Well, I, I used fountain pens at school, so I, I, in a sense, I've always been a fountain pen user. But I actually came to my current hobby of, of fountain pens really via uh, the, the three letter acronym EDC or Everyday Carry. Uh, I started out carrying machined metal ballpoint pens. Uh, and then gradually that got me interested in machine pens generally and into uh, fountain pens via tactile turn and, and other machined metal fountain pens. So um, that was the gateway drug for me and really the, the rest is history. Um, a bit of a cliched answer first, I actually get the most enjoyment and um, the thing that keeps me driving this hobby is hearing from readers of my blog. Um, couple of times uh, every week I'll get someone writing in thanking me for a recommendation that they've discovered a, an amazing pen uh, or asking for my help uh, or just sharing their story with me and I find that really powerful. I also uh, learn from a lot of the other voices in the community, folks like Brad Dowdy of The Pen Addict. Um, their continuing enthusiasm for fountain pens really does uh, help keep me going as well. Um, I, I also have a lot of great interactions with folks from pen companies, um, you know, machinists like Ben Walsh and Ian Sean, um, as well as guys like Luca from Scribo, Fabio from Goya, um, lots of others. And finding out about what they've got coming down the pipe is always um, really exciting too. I've got two answers here and, and they won't be a surprise to anyone who has seen my collection. Um, the Montblanc 149, and the Lamy 2000. I don't think either of these pens have, have any flaws uh, as a daily user, even though they're, they're chalk and cheese in terms of design. Um, they've both got great, um, firm, uh, smooth nibs, piston fillers, great in capacity, they don't dry out, good clips, and they're very comfortable. I think those are the criteria that, that you need for for any fountain pen. Uh, and I'd be quite happy stranded on a desert island with either of those models. Uh, that's, that's a really difficult one. Um, I've had the, the pleasure and privilege of handling some of Mont Blanc's uh, high artistry or, or super limited editions, stuff like the, um, the Mont Blanc Egyptomania 72, which is a pen inside a sarcophagus, or the Purdy 81, which is has a safety catch to take off the cap. Uh, when you get to look at those kinds of pens up close, even though they cost tens of thousands of euros, it just uh, makes you giggle like a, like a kid. Um, I, I also have a, a great love of some of the more decorated Japanese pens like um, the, the uh, Nakaya um, Raiden Galaxies as, in particular. Um, Moving more towards Europe, I, I, I love the look of the Kyoshe uh, enamel under the Aurora 100th anniversary. So um, that's been on my list for a long time. And of course, uh, the Arco celluloid. Um, I've, I've wanted one of the old win classics in Arco Verdi uh, for quite some time. In reality, the pen's too big for me, but I, I still daydream about that one a lot. Well, I, I, I'm an inveterate pen buyer and seller, so for me, the, the thrill of the chase is, uh, is a big motivator. I, I find myself daydreaming about a pen that I've got incoming, and that unboxing feeling is really addictive. Um, but I'm learning to love the collection I've got in front of me much more. And for me now, with two young children, actually just having some quiet time to sit with a glass of wine or a cup of coffee uh, and, and just write is is the real pleasure um feeling the ink flow onto the paper and just get my thoughts out onto the page that's really what it's all about um it's not about the pens it's about the writing well uh the easy answer to that is my two daughters uh, one of them is just turning nine uh one of them is two and uh they uh they really are my world and Right now, I wouldn't let either of them hold my expensive pens all that often, but 
Um, I, I bring my eldest to pen shows and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get her to catch the bug. Um, two pieces, one, one sort of practical, one more cultural. Um, I would say remember that the ink and the paper are just as important as the pen and its nib in giving you a good writing experience. If you find you're having problems or you don't like the way a pen feels, um, try different ink, try different paper. I personally can't stand Rhodia. Uh, I love Tomo River. Um, so that's just the way it goes. The, the second piece of advice is to use this wonderful community that we've got. Um, you don't have to buy all the pens yourself. You can go along to clubs, you can go along to pen meets and try them out. Um, find out what you like because there is so much variety out there in terms of um, the millions of inks, the uh, the thousands and thousands of pens, all the different nibs um, that you can choose from and it can be a bewildering journey. Um, so there are some fountain pen Facebook groups, uh, blogs, Instagram uh, communities that I uh, get a lot out of and I think any beginner would too. I actually, I thought long and hard about this question and actually I I don't have a lot of regrets. I mean, I've certainly sold a lot of pens that I every now and again miss. Uh, I sold two king size conids back before they stopped manufacturing um, and and I, I kick myself for doing that sometimes. Um, but actually, I think every uh, pen you buy, every um ink you try and then dislike is is a lesson you've learned it's an experience you've gained so um i'm yeah i'm very happy with that and the pens that got away well there's there's a, a an infinite number of pens out there and always um new special editions that you uh have that fear of missing out on um so i've learned to be at peace with that uh and i'm i'm in a really good place right now so thanks a lot